In this video we're going to run over a, su a summary of exponent rules so I hope you've printed off this exponent rule summary sheet and please keep this beside you throughout the rest of the chapter because it'll be needed. Okay, I'm just going to quickly we'll just fill this out together so 10 to the power of 4 you might remember means 10 times itself 4 times right and what's that and 10 to the power of 3 is 10 times itself 3 times 10 squared is 10 times itself twice. And just see how far you get. Just with a pencil, just see how far you get. And if you make a mistake, then we can go back over it. But I just want to catch any um, mistakes or remind you of things that, of the exponent rules, basically. So please press pause if you need to and fill out you know, these powers of 10 at least, and then we'll go over them together. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100, obviously, and then 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 10 is 1,000. Okay, so three tens makes 1,000 multiplied, right? So another one will be 10,000, right? So 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000. So um, what's 10 to the power of 1 then? 10 to the power of 4, there's 4 tens. 10 to the power of 3, there's 3 tens. 10 to the power of 2, there's 2 tens. 10 to the power of 1, there's 1 ten. So what's 10 to the power of 0? No tens? Nope. It's not no tens. It's not zero. Zero is wrong. It's not the answer is not zero there. Okay. <clears throat> to help you actually understand this instead of just memorizing what the answer is, let's have a look at a little pattern we have here. You see the way okay, we have the same base all the way through this this table. 10 is the base, and the exponents are going down by 1 each time. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Okay? Now, if you take 10,000, and if you, if you want to go from here to here, from this level to this level, what do you do? What would you do to 10,000 to get it from here to here? And then do the same operation to get from here to here. What, what would you, how am I getting from this to this to this? What am I doing to the number, so to speak? I'll try. Uh, you, if you take 10,000, you see, and you actually divide by 10, if you take 10,000 and divide by 10, don't you get 1,000? Right? What happens when you take 1,000 divided by 10, what do you end up with? What's 1,000 divided by 10? 100. The next one, right? 10 squared, right? So I'm going 10 to the 4, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, and as I divide by 10, I get the next one in the sequence. So all I have to do to get 10 to the power of 1 is take 100, divide it by 10, and I'll get it. 100 divided by 10 gives 10. There it is. See, that's why, right? So what do I do to get 10 to the power of 0? You do the exact same thing. So what is 10 to the power of 0? 10 to the power of 0 is 10 divided by 10. What's 10 divided by 10? Don't say 0, otherwise you're in the wrong class. Okay, 10, 10 divided by 10 is definitely 1, isn't it? Okay. <coughs> so 10 to the power of 0 is 10 divided by 10, which is 1. Right? That's why it is 1. Why is 3 to the power of 0 equal to 1? The reason that 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1 is because 3 to the power of 0 is 3 divided by 3. That's what it is. And that's why it's 1. Not just because the math book said so and, and you had to memorize that. Uh, why is um, anything to the power of 0? Do this one. What, how would you calculate 4 to the power of 0? 4 to the power of 0? 4 over 4, which is 1, okay? And I guess at this point we might as well figure out our x's. x to the power of 4 is x times x times x times x four times. x cubed is x times x times x three times. x squared is x times x. And the next one, x to the power of 1, if, if you look at this sequence as well, if, if you take x to the power of 4 and you divide it by x, if you take this string of things and then divide it by x, won't you cross one of the x's off? Okay. See, if you take this, divide by x, you'll get this uh, sequence, right? If you take x times x times x and you divide that by x, one of them crosses off. I'll show you. 
x squared, you see, is x times x times x divided by x. If you do that, one of the x's cross cancels. What are you left with? x times x, or x squared. So x squared is actually x cubed divided by x. So my point is, I just need to divide by the base and I get the next number in the sequence, right? If I take these guys, what happens if you take x times x and you divide that by x again? <clears throat> if you have x times x and you divide it by x, you get... Let's see that. x times x divided by x. One of the x x's cross cancels and you're left with one, one left over, right? x. Okay. So x times x divided by x gives me x and so on, right? And the next one, to get the next, see these, again these exponents are going 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, they're going down by 1, so we have a pattern here. If I take this x and divide it by x, what do I get? What is x divided by x equal to? See, x to the power of 0 is x to the power of 1 divided by x, or x divided by x, which is, well it's 1, isn't it? So that's why x to the power of 0 is 1, because it's x divided by x, right? And if I continue the sequence, like for 10 to the power of negative 1, is 10 to the power of negative 1 a negative number? It's not a negative number. You've got to remember that. This is not a negative number. It's just another uh, part of this sequence of exponents here, right? If you take 1, 10 to the power of 0, and divide that by the base, by 10, you get the next number in the sequence. So let me ask you, what is 1 divided by 10? That's something you need to know. That's all I'm asking. Not asking for much, I hope. <laughs> okay, 1 divided by 10 is 1 over 10. 1 tenth, or 0 0.1, right? Okay, 10 to negative 1 is 1 tenth. Similarly, uh, uh, yeah, and anyway, it, it goes on and on. If I take 1 tenth and divide that by 10, if you had a dime and you divided that dime into 10 equal parts, what would you get? <coughs> you would get, and I'll, I'll show you, okay, 1 tenth divided by 10 is one tenth multiplied by what's the reciprocal of ten? This is ten over one, reciprocal is one over ten. Okay, one tenth times one tenth is one over one hundred, isn't it? Or one over ten squared, isn't it? So one tenth divided by ten is in fact one over ten squared. See, 10 to the negative 2 is 10 to the negative 1 divided by 10, or 1 tenth divided by 10, or 1 over 10 squared. What's 1 over 10 squared divided by 10? 1 over 10 squared divided by 10 is 1 over 10 squared multiplied by, this guy flipped upside down, 1 over 10. And 1 over 10 squared times 1 over 10 is 1 over, there are 1, 2, 3 tens being multiplied on the bottom. 1 over 1,000, right? It's 1 over 1,000, or it's 1 over 10 cubed, right? So 10 to the negative 3 is 1 over 10 cubed. Take a wild guess as to what 10 to the negative 4 is. 1 over what? Take a guess. 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 10 squared. 10 to the negative 3, 1 over 10 cubed. 10 to the negative 4, 1 over... 10 to the power of 4, right? What do you think um, 10 to the power of negative 9 is equal to? Take a guess. 10 to the power of negative 9. It's 1 over 10 to the power of 9. Yep. What do you think 3 to the power of negative 5 is equal to? 1 over 3 to the power of 5, okay? What do you think um, 8 to the power of negative 10 is equal to? 8 to the power of negative 10. 
It's 1 over something. 1 over what? 1 over a to the power of 10. Okay. And revisiting the powers of negative 1, 10 to the power of negative 1 is actually 1 over 10 or 1 over 10 to the power of 1. Same thing, right? 10 is 10 to the power of 1 is just 10. If you were to look at something like 3 to the power of negative 1, you could say that that is 1 over 3 to the power of 1, or just 1 over 3, same thing, right? What about, can you do this one? Um, uh, 9 to the power of negative 1, what's 9 to the power of negative 1? 1 over 9 to the power of 1, or 1 ninth, same thing, right? 1 over 9, right? Okay. So that's the negative exponents. We covered 0, we covered the negative exponents. And uh, let's have a look at the x's then. What do you think x to the power of negative 1 is? Let me give you a hint. It's 1 over something. 1 over x to the power of 1, which of course is 1 over x, right? What about x to the power of negative 2? 1 over x squared, right? x to the power of negative 3, 1 over 1 over x cubed. x to the power of negative 4 is 1 over x to the power of 4. Okay. What is y to the power of negative 13 equal to? One over y to the power of positive 13. Yep. And how about um, p to the power of negative 1? What's that equal to? One over p to the power of positive 1, which is the same thing as 1 over b, right? Okay, so we've covered negative exponents inside and out, we've covered the power of 0. Let's have a look at the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rules, okay? The product rule says that a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus l. Now, why is that? For example, 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 3 would in fact be 2 to the power of 5 plus 3 or 2 to the power of 8. Why is that? Can you explain why? Because it's when you understand something that you really remember it. Well, 2 to the power of 5, you see, is um, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 5 twos multiplied together, isn't it? Right? What's 2 cubed? 2 to the power of 3 is in fact 1, 2, 3 twos multiplied, isn't it? So we have 5 twos multiplied by 3 twos. How many twos is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's why it's 2 to the power of 8, right? So that's the product rule. When you multiply by the same base, you've got to add the exponents. If you had x to the power of negative 3 times x to the power of negative 4, that would be equal to x to the power of the first exponent, negative 3, but then I must add plus negative 4, which gives me what? x to the power of negative 7, which is, write that with a positive exponent, x to the power of negative 7 with a positive exponent, 1 over x to the power of 7. Remember, in math it's considered simplified when the answer does not have negative exponents. So when we're doing algebra, we need to leave our answer with a positive exponent. So if you have a negative exponent, you just go one over that with a positive and you're good, basically, right? Quotient rule, a to the power of m over a to the power of n equals a to the power of m minus n. When we divide by the same base, we must subtract the exponents. The top exponent, subtract the bottom exponent. So two to the power of five over two to the power of three, looks like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5 twos multiplied. 2 to the power of 5 is 5 twos multiplied, isn't it? 2 to the power of 3 is 1, 2, 3 twos multiplied. And if I was to cross cancel, I would do this. See? I'm multiplying on the top and bottom so I can cross cancel. And how many twos am I left with? 2 times 2 all times 1's all over 1, which is just 2 times 2 which is over 1, which is just 2 squared, isn't it? Isn't that 2 squared? Right? So, or I could just use the quotient rule. So I could go 2 to the power of the top exponent, 5, minus the bottom exponent, 3. Where did the subtract sign come from? The subtract sign came from the fact that I'm dividing by the same base and therefore I can do what's called the quotient rule. Okay, and so 5 minus 3 is 2, so it's 2 squared, obviously, that is correct. Now, people mess up a lot when they come to the quotient rule with negatives on the exponents themselves. So what I like to say is, why don't you do it this way? X, this We have the same base, the base is x, so I can use the quotient rule. But instead of writing out the exponents, I'll just go parenthesis um, minus parenthesis, okay? And then I'll actually fill in the exponents. So if I put in parentheses like that, then it'll help me not make a mistake on the negatives. So x to the negative 4, that gets filled here. Negative, the top exponent goes in first. and and the bottom exponent goes in over here. Does that make sense? Not the other way around. You have to do it the top exponent, subtract the bottom exponent. Now we have a double negative. Negative negative makes plus plus, right? So that is negative 4 plus positive 3, negative 1. And what's, how would you simplify x to the power of negative 1? <coughs> you would write it as 1 over x to the power of 1 which is 1 over x right okay so power rules we have uh, basically this one and this one come up most of all um, a to the power of m all to the power of n equals a to the power of m times n if I'm taking a power of a power I can multiply the exponents why is that the reason is, let's have a look at this. 2 to the power of 5 and then all cubed. Okay? Hmm, let's see. Cubed means that you've got parenthesis times parenthesis times parenthesis. Parenthesis times itself three times, right? 2 to the power of 5 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 5 twos, right? So. I have five twos multiplied by itself three times, right? How many twos is that going to be altogether? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. How many twos do I have? Fifteen, right? So you can expand it out and multiply it if you like, or you can just use the power rule and say that's two to the power of um, five times three, or three times five, whichever you like to call it. And five threes, of course, is fifteen. Okay, and of course, fifteen twos multiplied is two to the power of fifteen. Okay, so if you have negative exponents, you just do the same thing. It'll just be x to the power of the first exponent multiplied by the next exponent. So basically, you'll have negative three multiplied by negative four in this case, right? And negative times negative gives positive, so x to the power of positive 12, right? Another rule is if you have an exponent on the outside of something that can be distributed into each uh, factor on the inside of the parentheses, okay? If you have an exp uh, exponent on the outside of parentheses that can be distributed onto each factor. So a, a times b to the power of m equals 8 power of m times b to the power of m. So 2 times 5 squared is 2 squared times 5 squared. Um, how can I show that? Well, 2 times 5 squared, of course, is this. It's parenthesis times parenthesis, right? Or 2 times 5 times 2 times 5, okay? And 2 times 2, of course, is 2 squared. And 5 times 5, of course, is 5 squared. So, of course, I have 2 squared times 5 squared, right? Which is what the 
the uh, power rule is saying that you can stick the squared into each factor. Okay. So if you have x times y to the power of negative 3, what's that? Well, the negative 3 can go on to each factor, right? So you can get x to the power of negative 3 times y to the power of negative 3. How would you simplify that answer, though? You would write it 1 over x cubed times 1 over y cubed, which could then be written as simply 1 times 1, multiply the top across, multiply the fractions, you'd multiply the tops and get 1, multiply the bottoms, get x cubed, y cubed, okay? So 1 over x cubed, y cubed, yep. Now, a to the power of 4, b to the power of negative 2, all to the power of negative 5, the same thing applies, I just put the power of negative 5 onto each factor in here. So I get basically um, I get um, a to the power of uh, oh sorry let me put it up here a to the power of 4 uh, where's my thing oh, there it is a to the power of 4 to the power of negative 5 times um, b to the power of negative 2 and then that is put to the power of negative 5 Okay. Now, 8 to the power of 4 to the power of negative 5, you've got to multiply them. 8 to the power of negative 20, right? B, square, or B to negative 2 to the power of negative 5 is B to the power of negative times negative, positive 10. Okay? But of course, this is 8 to the power of negative 20 is 1 over A to the power of 20. So we have that times B to the power of 10, right? which gives, can you write it as one fraction? Yeah, because b to the power of 10 is, is the same thing as b to the power of 10 over 1. So multiply the tops, b to the power of 10, multiply the bottoms, a to the power of 20, right?